In this video we're going to look at momentum and impulse. And related to Newton's second law, which says the net force on an object is equal to the mass times acceleration. Now, using some calculus, we know acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time, or the change in velocity with a change in time, and we could rewrite that as d dt of m times v. And the reason we do that is m times v has a special name in physics. We call m times v the momentum. So m times v is the momentum. And so the force can be considered the rate of change of the momentum. That's what force can be considered, rate of change of momentum. And we have a label for that. We leave that little p, which is really a rho. That is a vector quantity. So momentum has a vector. It has direction. Now, there's another quantity you'll see pop up called the impulse. So what is the impulse? And there's a symbol for that. J and that's a vector as well. The impulse is actually the force on the object, the net force, times the change in time. So we can actually think of that as the integral from T1 to T2 of your force dt. Because what you get when you integrate that, you get the force times T2 minus T1. So it's the force times the change in time. That's what we said, the impulses. Now, the only thing is we know that this integral from T1 to T2 of the force dt, we can rewrite this as the integral from T1 to T2. Uh, we could replace our force with d dt of mv, that's from up here, dt. And m times v, remember, is the momentum. So we could say, well, that's d, the derivative of the momentum, dt times dt. These dt's can cancel. And so what you really have is the integral and think of it is the momentum at time 1 and the momentum at time 2. So that's momentum 1, momentum 2 that I'm going to put here as my limits on the integral, dp, which is really simply p2 minus p1, which are vectors as well. So what's the long and short of this? The long and short of this says that the impulse, the impulse, which we call j, is equal to the force, the net force, times the change in time, times T1, T2 minus T1, which can simply be rewritten as the change in impulse, the net change in impulse, P2 minus P1. So, sorry, remember that change in momentum. So the impulse of an object is the net change in momentum, or the total change you can think of in momentum. And the force is the rate of change of momentum. So force is rate of change of momentum, and impulse is the total change of momentum. Think of, think of it as that integral of the momentum. So let's apply this to a few examples. Okay, so here we have a point zero four five kilogram golf ball initially at rest. It's given a speed of 25.9 meter seconds when a club strikes. So here's a little diagram. The club is about to strike the ball. And uh, if the club and ball are, are in contact for 2 milliseconds, so this is 2 milliseconds, 2 milliseconds, what is the average force that acts on the ball? What average force acts on the ball? So we just saw that the impulse is equal to the force, the net force, times T2 minus T1. And we said, well, that's also equal to the change in momentum, P2 minus P1. And so we can use this formula here to figure out the average force. In fact, 
we can think of F as the net force or the average force so either one it will work for so how do we figure out so let's think of this the average force here so actually we're going to use this part of the equation here and we want to know the average force so F is actually equal to the change in momentum P2 minus P1 the change in momentum over the change in time well the change in men momentum initially the momentum is zero so P1 is actually zero there's nothing going on and the afterwards when it's hit the momentum remember P is M times V so the momentum is M times V so we have 0 0.045 which is a mass times V which is 25.9 minus 0 all over the change in time now the change in time is T2 minus T1 which is actually 2 milliseconds which is 0 0.002 and so if you calculate that out you get 582.75 and what are the units of this? Well, it's force, so it's newtons. Okay, think of this. We got, we have kilograms, and here we have speed of meters per second, and here we have seconds. And so we have kilograms meters per second divided by second. So that's kilograms meters per second squared, which are which is newtons. So you can think of this on the side here. What are newtons? Kilograms, meters, over second squared. That's what newtons are. And on the other hand, you might want to think of forces, mass times acceleration. What is that? Kilograms times meters per second squared. So the same units. So that's my force. So my net force is 582.75 newtons, or 583 newtons. Alright, so in this one we have the force of a baseball swing and a base baseball has a mass of 0.155 kilograms so let's see what that looks like. So here's the baseball and, and so it's 0.155 kilograms and it's being pitched, it's being pitched and the velocity is 48 meters per second in this direction and then the bat so this bat hits the ball this bat hits the ball and sends it back this way so it's coming in this direction and then the bat hits it back in the opposite direction at 54 meters per second find the magnitude of the change in momentum of the ball and of the impulse applied to it by the bat so first of all the change in momentum this change in momentum well the change in momentum is really P2 minus P1 and the, cha the, the initial, the second momentum is if you think of these two velocities they're vectors and they have opposite signs so let's think of P2 as being positive so P2 its, its velocity is 54 and let's think of it as positive and then times its mass because momentum is mass times vol mass times velocity and then minus well then we have to think of this initial velocity as negative then so that's going to be minus a minus right because it's p2 minus p1 so this is the first minus and then negative on the velocity 48 times 0.155 okay so meters per second times kilograms meters per second times kilogram so my answer is going to be in meters uh, kilograms per second or meters per second times kilograms and we worked that out that works out to be about 15.8 uh, meters per second times kilogram so what is that change in momentum of course that's the what we defined as the impulse and so the impulse is 15.8 meters kilogram per second or if you like sometimes sometimes I write it as kilograms meters per second
doesn't really matter. The same units. So that's my impulse. Now here's another part to the question. So if the ball remains in contact for about for two milliseconds, find the magnitude of the average force. So remember, we said that the impulse is equal to the average force, which we'll call F average, times the change in time, times T2 minus T1. And this is also equal to the change in momentum, P2 minus P1. So we are just figured out P2 minus P1. P2 minus P1 is 15.8, which is the impulse, right? So we have 15.8 is my impulse is equal to the average force, F average, times the change in time. Well, the change in time in this case is going to be 2.3 milliseconds, which is 0 0.0023. And so we solve this for the average force. You divide both sides by um, 0 0.0023, and you get approximately 68.70 newtons, because the force is going to be in newtons. And so that's my average force. So you divide those sides by 0 0.0023 to find the average force. In the next video, we'll look at a little bit more complicated application of momentum and impulse.